Now, pay close attention to this area right here at the border of the vaginal opening. This, my friends, is where the hymen is located. As we zoom in on the vestibular area, you can see the hymenal rim more clearly. It's this thin, elastic mucosal structure that partially surrounds the vaginal opening. Oh, and see these small openings here? These are the ducts of the Bartholin's glands, which provide lubrication to the vaginal vestibule. Now, let's take a closer look at the different types of hymens we can encounter. As you can see here, we've got several naturally occurring forms. Cribriform, with multiple small perforations, imperforate, which has no opening, and microperforate, with a very small opening. But what's the hymen actually made of? Well, if we look at it under a microscope, we can see that it's composed of non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Underneath this, we've got the lamina propria, which contains microcapillaries, elastic fibers, and a connective tissue matrix. Let's rewind a bit and look at how the hymen develops in the first place. During fetal development, from about 6 to 20 weeks gestation, we see the fusion of the malarian ducts and the differentiation of the urogenital sinus. The hymen actually forms as a remnant of the vaginal plate during a process called canalization. It's pretty amazing to think that this small piece of tissue has been with us since before we were born. Now, one of the most misunderstood aspects of the hymen is its elasticity. Watch closely as we simulate some mechanical pressure on this hymenal tissue. See how it stretches? This elasticity allows the hymen to accommodate pressure without necessarily being damaged or torn. The hymen changes throughout a person's life, from newborn to postmenopausal stages. In newborns, the hymen is typically thicker due to maternal hormones. During childhood, it becomes thinner and more translucent. At puberty, increased estrogen causes it to become more elastic and vascular. In adulthood, it maintains this elasticity. In postmenopausal individuals, we see some atrophy and it becomes paler and thinner again. Clinicians assess overall genital health, checking for abnormalities or signs of infection during comprehensive pelvic exams. Clinicians also assess surrounding structures, including the skena's glands near the urethra, which contribute to lubrication during arousal. To summarize, we've seen that the hymen is a normal anatomical variant with no consistent structure. Its features are established during embryological development and modified by age and hormonal state. The hymen exhibits considerable elasticity and can accommodate various physical pressures. This exploration highlights the complexity and variability of human anatomical structures. As always, stay curious and keep learning about the fascinating world of human anatomy.